Hello, everybody. Let's talk about delivering dental care as a dental assistant. So this could be good as an overall review, or if you're a new dental assistant, you have just graduated, this might help you kind of determine what steps you need to take from you see a patient in your schedule, you know you have to seat them, you know you have to prepare, you have to get the dentist, you have to help the dentist, sign them out. So let me kind of tell you how that all works. And I do have some notes. So if you guys see me look off to the Side, that's what that's for. Okay. Just to let you know, I didn't want to forget anything for you. So basically you need to know your patients. And the first thing to do is to check the patient schedule for that day. I typically like to divide it from the morning to the afternoon appointments, but it depends on how many patients you see. If you're only seeing four patients all day, then you can probably look at the whole day. That will be easier for you. If you're seeing 10 patients that day or more, then you might want to divide it to the morning and the afternoon. What I liked to do, if possible, if you had enough trays, enough tools, enough instruments, was I like to set up for my morning patients. I like to get all of the trays set up, stack them on top of each other, put them in the cupboard. So that way, if you do get behind, let's say after your first patient or your second patient, that's okay because you know you have to clean everything up, disinfect, sterilize it all. But then once you're all done that, you just have to reach into the cupboard, take out your tray that's already set up, put it on the table there, and then put everything together. So that's what I like to do. But as a dental assistant, though, depending on how many rooms you might be working out of, how many trays you have, you might not have enough to do that. So keep that in mind. But the more organized you are, the better. So basically, the rule of thumb is, like I said, you want to look at the schedule for that day to see what patients are you seeing, what are their names, and what are they in for? Are they in for a tooth extraction? Are they in to do an amalgam, a composite, a crown, a bridge? All of these things are good to know. And the dentist will likely have a schedule as well if they check it on the computer, if there's a piece of paper, but both of you guys should have access to that at all times, especially if there's any changes. Let's say the second patient of the day cancels. Well, reception is going to have to let you know. Either they change that in the computer, on paper, or both. It really depends on your office. So after you've looked at the schedule, now you have to make sure you have the right charts. Sometimes patients have the same name. It has happened where the wrong chart has been pulled. Make sure you have the right chart, double check, so that way when you do bring the patient back, you don't want to be taking out the chart and then saying, oh, you're not Mr. Smith, I have the wrong chart. You never want to look like you don't know what you're doing or somebody messed up in front of the patient. So have the chart, have the schedule, know what you are doing. And then what you want to do is bring the patient back. So of course, they're going to be in the waiting room. You're going to call their name and then they're going to follow you back into the operatory. Have the patient have a seat, check if there's any medical changes, dental changes, write that down in the chart and then let the dentist know that they're all set and ready to go. Now, where is the dentist going to be? They could be in their office. They could be checking other hygiene patients. They could be doing other things, but let the dentist know as soon as the patient arrives, you are ready. And I do always suggest to go back to the patient and make small talk. You don't want to leave the patient alone for too long because they might be nervous. And it's just much better to make small talk than to leave them alone for 20 minutes. They're checking their watch. They don't know what's happening. Where did the assistant go? Where's the dentist? So I suggest staying in the room with the patient. Talk about the weather, talk about the weekend, talk about anything you want to talk about, make small talk with them. Even talk about their procedure that they are doing that day. Maybe they have questions. See if they have any questions. Because when the dentist walks in, you want everything to be prepared. So while you're waiting for the dentist to come in, maybe even before you let the dentist know that they're ready for you, you are um, ready for the dentist to come in. Maybe check to make sure you have everything set out properly. Let's just say you're doing a composite. Make sure you have the patient's chart, you have the topical out, you have the local anesthetic out, because we know the first thing the dentist is going to do is give local anesthetic. They're going to prepare for that tooth, right? You need to put the tooth to sleep. 
Unless it's a small cavity, then they might not be using anesthetic. I'm sure the dentist will let you know. Hopefully you guys had talked about that before the patient came back. So you know what to set up for because there are times when they wouldn't use local anesthetic for a very small cavity that needs to be fixed. But if they are, that's the first thing that they're going to do is say hi to the patient, give them local anesthetic, and then possibly put on the rubber dam. But then you want the anesthetic. Sometimes the rubber dam is done before the anesthetic has started working. Sometimes it's put on afterwards. It really depends. But either way, that's the first thing that the dentist is going to do. And then they're going to leave the room for maybe 10 minutes because you can't really get started on, until the anesthetic has taken effect. And then same thing, don't leave the patient, talk to them, um, because that's another way to prevent a medical emergency is stay with the patient at all times, make sure they're doing okay, especially after local anesthetic is done. Now, I would typically also take this time to make sure, again, I had everything on the tray. Do you have what is needed for a composite procedure and any extras that you might need? Maybe not on the tray, but do you know where they are if you need to quickly grab it? You don't want to be leaving the room because you forgot the rubber dam material, or you don't want to be leaving the room because you forgot the topical. Get everything there ready to go and make sure things are organized. So when the dentist walks in, they're not really walking into a mess either. So while that happens, I would, depending on if you're a new dental assistant or not, go through the steps of the procedure in your head. Don't ask a lot of questions during the procedure because that can give the patient the idea that you don't know what you're doing. Especially a new dental assistant, it is great to ask questions, but ask before the procedure to the dentist or ask afterwards to the dentist. Not in front of the patient within reason. I mean, if you need to ask a question in front of the patient, of course do. If it's, do you prefer the bulb burnisher or the PFI instrument, let me know and I can pass that to you. That is okay to ask in front of the patient, but don't ask things like, why are we doing this composite procedure? Why are you using the rubber dam? But for the last patient, you didn't, you know, things like that, wait until either the beginning or the end. So while the procedure is happening, um, practice makes perfect. The more procedures you assist with, the better you are going to get. After the procedure is done, the dentist will typically take off the rubber dam check the bite, all of that, depending on the procedure, of course, and then check to see if the patient needs anything, if they have any questions. You, as the dental assistant, will be the one to maybe check again if the patient has any questions. If the dentist left the room, you know, check again. It can't hurt. Do you have any questions? How do you feel? And give them any post-op instructions. If, if half their tongue is numb from the anesthetic, let them know. Be careful with your tongue. Don't bite the tongue. The, the um, anesthetic might take four hours to come out. It might take six hours or it could take a half an hour. You never know, but give them post-op instructions so they know what to expect. And then you are going to be bringing the patient out, seat them again in the waiting room. Typically the um, a receptionist doesn't like if the patient's hanging around the front desk because they might be doing other things. They might be on the phone. They might be talking to other patients. So I always say to bring the patient out, have them have a seat in the waiting room. Let the patient know. I just have to make a few notes in your chart, whether that's true or not, who knows, but that way they're not in a hurry. Let them know, say, I just have to make a few notes in your chart. It's just going to be a couple moments. Then I'm going to bring your chart up front. The dental receptionist will let you know when they are ready for you. They will call your name, have a seat, watch TV, read a magazine, and they will let you know, have a nice day. So that's typically what I do. And then you might be the one going back to write up the chart, or perhaps the dentist is doing that for you. And then you just have to bring the chart up to the dental um, uh, the receptionist, and they will either put in the codes, book the next appointment. Sometimes the dental assistant is the one to put in the codes and book the next appointment, but most often it's going to be the dental receptionist at the front to write down the codes, check the treatment plan, see if there's another appointment that needs to be booked. So that is your job as a dental assistant. And not to forget, sorry guys, I'm not done yet. Don't forget to, of course, go back to the room 
you need to clean everything up. You need to disinfect everything, throw things out that need to be disposed of, and then you are going to, to pre-clean and then sterilize the instruments, typically in a separate sterilization area, and then set up for the next one. So practice makes perfect. You might feel like a fish out of water for the first little bit. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask for help to other dental assistants. I was a dental assistant before as well. I know how crazy, how busy things can get, but practice makes perfect. Before you know it, you will be amazing. And then going like, oh, wow, like four years ago when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing, but now I'm actually helping other people. So hang in there because every procedure is a little bit different, but you will get better and better. And every office Every dentist is different as well. So what you did at another office might be different than what this dentist likes to do at this office. So keep that in mind and hang in there. And good luck. If you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.